Hello everyone and welcome to the 12th Coco programming tutorial. Yes, you heard correctly, we are revisiting the 12th Coco programming tutorial. And just in case you forget what the 12th tutorial is, because I know you guys remember every single tutorial, but this is the tutorial on icons. So how to actually create an icon for your application. And you might be like, oh, why are you, why are you revisiting this? I don't want to see this. I want to learn something new. And yes, I want to learn something new too. But the point of this is that um, there have now been major changes to how icons are created for Mac applications that uh, it basically makes Lesson 12 uh, worthless because it doesn't really work anymore. So I figure this is something that I have to get done at some point. And so we're going to cover how to create icons for your Mac applications. So what's, what's changed from the original Lesson 12? Well, the original Lesson 12 used Icon Composer, which was basically an application that you put in a bunch of images, Icon Composer made you a nice icons file, and then you put that in your Xcode project. Now, what's changed is that we now have Retina displays, which means Icon Composer really wasn't built for that. Uh, it was built to work with standard displays, and the format that it had really doesn't have anything to do, it, it really just can't handle how Retina images would work in it. So Apple basically said, okay, we're going to scrap Icon Composer and make them do it this way. And the way they made you do it is very simple, actually. You just collect all your images, both your standard screen size images and your Retina screen size images. You put them into one folder and then you basically call it something and Xcode will make you an icon out of it. So it's really not that uh, difficult, uh, it's just a different way of doing it. So uh, with that, basically, uh, you know, this is our application here. And uh, what you want to do though, of course, for creating an, uh, an icon is get all of your icon sizes. Now, you should have five images for your uh, standard display or icons, and then you should also have um, five matching ones for your retina display. So in total you will have 10 icons. Now you might notice I only have eight here. The reason for this is because I'm lazy and I didn't want to try to make new retina images for this, um, so uh, bear with me, but it's very... Uh, I'll cover how to actually uh, create your icons in full. So um, you can kind of ignore what I have over here. The important part is to actually look at this nice uh, page on the human interface guidelines section on uh, Apple's site. Now, if you haven't read the human interface guidelines, uh, it's a really nice document that explains uh, UI layout and design on Mac applications. But there are, of course, very important things that appear like how to create icons. So um, this section right here basically explains how icons should be created and named for your icon. So what you need to do is, um, just so you're aware, basically what we used to have is, or what we still have, is that any icon file that you create is is considered an icons file, or .icns, which stands for icons. And this is basically just a collection of images into a file, essentially. So uh, what we used to have is basically five images that made up an icons file. And so now what we're doing is basically doing the same thing with 10 images, with both Retina and um, standard ones. But the point is, you have 10 of these individual images that make up the total icons file. Now, what we have here is you can see there's this at 2x sort of syntax, and there's just nothing. The nothing represents uh, a file that is for standard displays. So if I I have to create an image that is 16 by 16, 32, 128, 256, and 512. Those are the sizes that we need to create for our applications. Now, um, this was always the case, but as you can see, these are standard size, our standard screen size uh, uh, images. So basically what this means is that when you see this file name of icon underscore 16 by 16, that means that it's actually going to be a pixel size of 16 by 16. Again, the standard size for standard displays. Now, when you see the at 2x syntax, this represents that we have a retina image. So that actually means that it has double the pixel density. And so therefore it is double the pixel count uh, lengthwise and widthwise. 
So instead of uh, when we have an icon on standard displays that are 16 by 16, uh, it's basically a 16 by 16 pixel size. But if we have that same icon, that would actually display the same size. It would, uh, if we compared two screens, one retina and one standard, the icon itself would actually appear to be the same size. But of course, the retina has twice the pixel density, so it actually has twice as many pixels that we have to uh, create for that image. So the point, uh, the reason these are named or called the same thing, uh, they're not, you know, this isn't 32 by 32 at 2x, is because they're going to display the same on either display. So on my retina display, they would appear to be the same size as they would be on a standard display. Of course, the retina ones would have uh, twice the resolution in the same image, but if you actually compared, like if you got out a measuring stick and you actually you know, measured them on screen, they should appear to be the same size on screen. So this is considered point count, or uh, the points versus pixels. Pixels are actually the image pixel count, and the points are really uh, the size on the screen. So again, I hope you kind of get the idea of this, but basically, uh, just to kind of go through this one, if we had a standard image size of uh, for our standard displays, we just say icon underscore the size of the pic or size of the image basically, and that would map to the pixel size on a standard display. But for that same image type on a retina display, we have to create an image that is twice the pixel density because, of course, the retina display is they have twice the pixel density. And so we label them to be the exact same point count, but, of course, the retina ones are denoted with this at 2x because they have um, twice as many pixels or twice the density. So this is basically the chart that you really need. Um, it's all you really need to understand, I think, how to design these images. Um, the point, though, is that we have technically the same point count on screen. The images will appear to be the same size to the user, but just by denoting this at 2x, that tells uh, the computer that, hey, this is a retina image, so it actually has twice the pixel density that you can use for retina displays. All right. so. Anyway, if you have any questions on that, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Um, I can, I think I can clear anything that you would have for questions on that. Now, uh, of course, these are all the images that I combined into a folder, which is called the folder icons. And um, basically, like I said, I should have eight total images, or sorry, I should have 10 total images here, but I only have eight. And uh, I should have the 512 by 512 at 2x and also one for the 32. All right, but nonetheless, let's go ahead and figure out how we can actually get these images into an icons file for our Xcode project. Now, there's actually two different ways you can do this. You can create an icon set that will allow Xcode to generate an, an icon for you, or you can actually create the icon ahead of time in terminal. So I'll show you both ways. Um, they're kind of neat in both respects. So if uh, this folder with all my icons, if I want to relabel this, I could call this icon.iconset. And what this will do is represent a set of images that will make up an icon. And if I want to actually preview this, I can quick look it by hitting the spacebar. And you can actually preview what your icon would look like uh, under this cool little slider stuff in uh, Quick Look. Now, what can I do with this icon set folder? Well, I can actually just plop it right into uh, Xcode. So if I go into Xcode, drop it into supporting files, and I copy it in like so. And now I just have this icon.icon set thing in my supporting files. In my plist, what I want to say for my icon file is just icon.icons. And that's just because you want to match the name of your icon set. When this code is compiled, Xcode will generate an icons file for us, and it'll be this name plus dot icons. So, of course, in our plist, we just say icon dot icons, and that will display that image that's generated. So, if I go ahead and run this, you can see that uh, Xcode's smart enough to realize that hey, you know, uh, we've actually uh, don't have 
two images, we're missing two images for retina displays, and I think that's a nice little note for it. Uh, you know, it's important to know that you're missing those images. And so you can see that our images are back for our nice little application. So that's all good and dandy. Now, if um, I want to do it the other way, uh, what I can do is do it via terminal. And so what I can do is just go to Spotlight and type in Terminal. And I've already done this uh, before, but I'll restart it again to explain. So um, how this works is I use a utility called Icon Util. It's just an icon generator, basically. It generates your icon file. And this uh, uh, is just a command line uh, utility that allows you to convert your folder of icons into an icons file. So I just want to say icon util dash c, and I think that stands for compile or something like that. And uh, then with this, I just want to say icons, which is basically the output. It's going to be an icons file. And then I want to pass in the path of the folder for those images. So if I go to Finder and I pass in my icon to icon set, I can just drop it into terminal like that. and It'll pass in the path. And if I hit return, as you can see, it actually generates that same warning as Xcode does. And the reason for this is because Xcode is actually running uh, this command line prompt when it goes to compile. So it's actually running this uh, command line utility. So uh, you might be wondering, where did this go? Well, it just went to our desktop uh, where this folder is located. So if I go back to Finder here into the desktop, you can see that now we get our icon.icons file that was generated from our icon or, or our folder of icons uh, or folder of images rather. So uh, from this, I can go ahead and drag it over here and I'll copy it in. And I don't need my icon set anymore. I can get rid of that if I want. And uh, of course, I called it icon.icons. So of course, in my plist, I should make sure that that is the correct name. And I can go ahead and run this. And as you can see, we have the application. The window works fine there. You can see the icon and you see the icon in the dock as well. So that is how you can put uh, a group of four images basically you take 10 total images five standard display five retina display uh, and you put those images into a folder you can do either the terminal utility or you can make an icon set folder and you can put that into xcode and xcode will generate that icons file for you so it's up to you how you want to do it doesn't really matter uh, both ways perfectly acceptable and again, if you have any questions on this, feel free to leave your questions in the comments below. I think this chart's uh, pretty clear on how you're supposed to label uh, all your images. Just say icon underscore and then the point count basically of your image. And then if it's an at, uh, or it's a retina display, you just say at 2x after the uh, name. So again, like I said, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Please subscribe to the channel, and I am looking forward to actually creating new tutorials instead of going back and doing uh, old ones. So anyway, I will see you guys in the next Coco tutorial.